Why do we like Fallout? At face value, it's an easy question to answer. We get to shoot monsters, both human and non, with lasers, smack giant cockroaches with baseball bats, and uh, build shitty houses. We like it because it's a game, and games are fun. The end. Right? Well, sort of, sure, but why Fallout? Why any post-apocalyptic game for that matter? Or post-apocalyptic anything? We love them. We love them so much that the AAA game industry has latched onto post-apocalyptia like it's a gold-encrusted teat, shoving games both great and terrible our way for shit over a decade. Wasteland, Metro, Dead Island, Dead Rising, Left 4 Dead, The Walking Dead, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, The Last of Us, which fucking killed it, and of course, Fallout. It's not just video games either. The Walking Dead, aside from being an amazing comic, is one of the most watched television shows in history, and Mad Max Fury Road was... Mediocre. What? No it isn't. He's just bitter because everyone's happy he's dead. So, why Fallout? Why is this terrible, terrible world so fucking awesome? Well. I'm not the first person to ask this question, and I won't be the last. YouTuber Jamin Warren of PBS Game Show asked this very question earlier this year. Essentially, he chalked it up as a combination of catharsis, a sense of relief we get from seeing fictional characters go through terrible ordeals, and hedonic reversal, the concept of our brains deriving satisfaction from overcoming tough obstacles and personal trials and tribulations. It's why we you know, watch sad movies and uh, get tattoos and call our parents. Now, I am bastardizing his video quite a bit because I'm just summarizing it here, and you should definitely go watch it after this if you haven't yet. He makes some great points in it, but honestly, I don't think he goes deep enough into it. He's not wrong when he points out that terrible settings where awful things happen to everybody have been around for a long time. We even have a term for it. Greek tragedy, where literally the worst things happen to fucking everybody. Oftentimes for no real reason other than life fucking sucks, and apocalyptic stories, well, they're old as hell. In Christianity, there's the Book of Revelation. In Islam, there's Yom Ud Din, the time of judgment. There's Ragnarok in Norse mythology, a giant war between gods that'll just, you know, destroy everything. Apocalypses aren't new, but post-apocalypses? They are new. Well. Kinda. The first post-apocalyptic story we'd recognize that matches the stories we tell nowadays was actually published in 1826 by Mary Shelley. Sound familiar? She should. She's most well known for writing Frankenstein, but that's not the book I'm talking about here. Actually, the book I'm talking about is The Last Man, which follows a group of people struggling to survive in a world ravaged by a plague. Unfortunately, the title is a major spoiler, and eventually it's just one dude alive by himself. It explores feelings of isolation that still influence apocalyptic stories today. I'm, I'm not gonna dwell on old books too much, but I do have to talk about I Am Legend, which is probably one of the best books I've ever read, to be entirely honest with you. There have been tons of movies and other media influenced by this book, but most don't even come close to touching the core themes of the book. It's pretty simple, really. A man in a world of vampires, the only one who's managed to avoid being turned into a monstrosity, struggles to maintain his humanity. The book wrestles with what it means to even be human and challenges modern conceptions of normalcy. For instance, is not killing zombies actually normal in a world where zombies exist? Anyway, point is, apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic stories have been around for a long time. Apocalyptic ones originate from a time where we became aware that there were forces beyond our control and comprehension that could change the very definition of normal and potentially completely eradicate humanity entirely. In ancient times, these were things like volcanoes and colossal storms, etc. As our understanding of the world grew, though, we expanded to include things like pandemics and The Last Man and I Am Legend, and as we created the means of our own eradication with the atom bomb, we got things like Doctor Strangelove, a tongue-in-cheek portrayal of, well, honestly, something people were really concerned would actually happen. Happen. In fact, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, is essentially a prototype for the Great War in the Fallout universe. One person shoots first, everyone's fucked because everyone launches everything they have at everyone else. I'm 28 years old. Well, right now I am. I was born in 1987, which was the tail end of the Cold War, which might as well be a fiction to me because it's not something I've ever actually personally experienced, just something I've heard about from old people and read about in books. So it's easy for someone like me and probably you too to forget that for like 
Some people's entire lives, they were worried that any day now could be the end of human civilization as we know it. So I know that videos like Duck and Cover seem kinda quaint now, but you have to realize that people who watched that as children had utter faith in the messages being put in front of them. They had no reason to not believe that at any second, all of this around us could go to shit. The 70s and 80s brought us some of the best and most iconic post-apocalyptic movies that tried to wrestle with this psychology. Adults who had grown up fearing instantaneous searing oblivion, trying to process what a world after everything ends would be like. We get A Boy and His Dog and Mad Max, movies that portray a bona fide hellscape of terror where grown men eat dog food and dress like, well, Okay, honestly, I kind of wish I could dress like that. But at some point, something switched. Mad Max, A Boy and His Dog, these aren't movies that we watch and go like, yeah, I want to fucking be that. But we do do that now with movies and TV shows and video games. Like, like when I'm watching The Walking Dead, I'm not going like, oh my God, this seems so terrifying. I'm like, holy fuck, I can do that so much better than you, you fucking moron. Here, let me start an apocalypse right fucking now and show you. So when did apocalypses stop being scary and start being awesome? I mean, I'm not alone in this, right? Am I the only one who got together with their friends and came up with a detailed plan for what to do when zombies do come, not if? Well, something changed in the early 90s. Something kind of small, but also kind of big that changed the entire way we frame geopolitical politics around the world. The Berlin Wall came tumbling down. The Berlin Wall was erected in 1961 by East Germany. It was a wall in Berlin that divided uh, normal Germany from the part of Germany that was absorbed into the Soviet Union. It was used to keep people out and to keep people in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union and the United States were effectively the two major powers pointing nuclear weapons at each other for decades during the Cold War. The Berlin Wall stood as a symbol for all the fears and anxieties people across the world had about nuclear annihilation. Its demolition symbolized a step in the right direction, a lowering of tensions and a return to normalcy. And this is the world that I grew up in, one with tensions dissipating, and it's the world that Fallout and The Walking Dead were born in. Suddenly, the threat of annihilation doesn't seem so imminent, but we just spent like 50 years stressing out about it. It's time to let off some steam. Sure, mom and grandpa freaked out about nuclear bombs dropping in their heads, but we know now how ridiculous that is, right? Let's have some goofy fun with it. So apocalypses are fun because of post-Red Scare jubilation, right? Well, maybe, but what if it's not as simple as that? But you just said that, yeah, I know, I say a lot of things, but I do think that the end of the Cold War is a huge reason why we think post-apocalyptic settings are fun instead of only terrifying. But let's just dig a little bit deeper into it for a second. In the article, Why Do We Love Apocalyptic Movies by writer Christopher Finke, Fink? Whatever. Christopher something or other lays out two rules for post-apocalyptic stories that make them so compelling. Rule one, the end is fucking nigh. Governments spin out of control and lose their grip over citizens. Mad scientists go a little too mad or maybe there's just a big fucking rock hurtling toward us. Anyway, shit's about to get real. Rule number two, the end, it never actually happens. It comes close, terrible things do happen. Thousands, millions, even billions of people get shift deleted from our planet. Life is difficult as fuck, but people still survive. However, many few. I wanna talk about Snowpiercer. Uh, don't forget the rules though. They are important and I guess spoilers for Snowpiercer coming up. I already watched it, so. I don't really care. Snowpiercer is a post-apocalyptic dystopian movie where all humanity has been wiped out by scientists trying to correct for global warming who accidentally freeze the whole planet instead. Oops. Anyway, the only humans left alive after this calamity are a few hundred folk who are living on a cruise train with a self-sustaining ecosystem. The protagonist of the movie is from the back of the train, where all the dregs of society are, and he's working his way toward the front of the train to dismantle all of the social order. The movie is important because the train is a caricature of our real world. There's social and class divisions, and everyone is trapped within this literal box of culture and society, where there are arbitrary rules that are arbitrarily dictated down to them from the time they're born. Why are you an upper class citizen? Because you were born in the foremost cars, not the ones in the rear. Everything is controlled, social mobility is difficult, and you feel trapped. You feel like you have no control over your life. Post-apocalyptic stories are the answer to this gnawing feeling of social stagnation and lack of control. Bills? Who the fuck cares about fucking bills? A bomb's been dropped on our heads. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Society, this train, fuck it, it's over. Sure, 
institutionalized healthcare may be fucked, but I can live in an abandoned subway if I want to, as long as I can keep the ghoul population under control. I'm gonna rip straight from that article from earlier where Finn K quotes literature researcher Wes Burdine, who says, apocalyptic narratives play into liberation fantasies. Mass annihilation is depressing, sure, but it's a hell more exciting than the mall and running to the store to buy toilet paper. Why are we excited about the apocalypse? Well, for one, it kind of feels like we're constantly on the brink of collapse, doesn't it? Remember rule number one, the end is nigh. There's wars going on all over the place. There's global warming, threats of asteroids, economic bubbles. Even if you try to maintain perspective, it still feels like at any moment all of this could come crashing down. So why is that awesome? Because in the event that we survive, it frees us to do whatever the fuck we want. We can be a hero who rises above the lack of established order and maintains our humanity. Or we can finally, finally be the asshole we've always secretly wanted to be. Shooting people in the face when they annoy us and stealing when it suits us because Who's gonna stop you when you have the biggest gun in the room? Apocalyptic stories aren't gonna go anywhere anytime soon. The Cold War may be over, but we've got like all kinds of things to worry about all the time. Our everyday reality feels like rule number one. Whether it's the outbreak of Ebola in 2014 that everyone thought was gonna kill us, uh, thanks again for that sensationalized coverage, Western media, or the renewed tensions with Russia over Syria and Turkey, or the impending doom of global climate change, overpopulation, solar flares, super volcanoes will never ever be out of things to worry about on this planet. So as long as there are things to worry about and societies that impose these worries upon us, we'll be looking for an escape and a way to tell ourselves that in spite of it all, that no matter what may happen to this train, that we will find a way to persevere and maintain control over our own lives and our own direction. Rule number two, the end never actually comes. The apocalypse is just a big reset button to save us from our own sense of boredom and lack of control. And that is why Fallout is fun. Thanks for watching. So why is Fallout fun to you? Is it about shooting bunches of monsters without remorse? Or is it about rebuilding society from the ground up and proving that humanity is eternal, that you can't just like erase it with radiation. I'd like to throw out a personal thank you to our Patreon supporters who make this show possible. You guys fucking rock. If you like this show, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you really, really, really liked it and you want to support us in any way that you can and you have money to spare, head over to our Patreon page and contribute whatever you can. I'm gonna go, go do stuff now. My life, liberty and pursuit of happiness. Actually, I'm gonna eat lunch because that is what we've dictated happens this time of day because society it's controlling my brain thoughts. I'm talking really weirdly, running out of things to say. Anyway, thank you for watching my show. Probably gonna cut that. Let me see your peacock.